what a lot of hairy-faced men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be as big a job as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this. How often do all these hairy-faced men wash their faces? Is it only once a week, like us, on Sunday nights? And do they shampoo it? Do they use a hairdryer? Do they rub hair tonic in to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to a barber to have their hairy faces cut and trimmed, or do they do it themselves in front of the bathroom mirror with nail scissors? I don't know. But next time you see a man with a hairy face, which will probably be as soon as you step out onto the street, maybe you will look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. Mr. Twit was one of these very hairy-faced men. The whole of his face, except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose, was covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr. Twit felt that this hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand, but in truth he was neither of these things. Mr. Twit was a twit. He was born a twit, and now at the age of sixty he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr. Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it does on most hairy-faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr. Twit wash this bristly, nail-brushy face of his? The answer is never. Not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. As you know, an ordinary unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it's not washed often enough, and there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in among the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel, and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy man cannot do that. We can also, if we're careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy man. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch, and you'll notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Mr. Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or on his sleeve while he was eating. But if you looked closely, not that you'd ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried-up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs, and spinach and tomato ketchup, and fish fingers, and minced chicken livers, and all the other disgusting things Mr. Twit liked to eat. If you looked closer still, hold your noses, ladies and gentlemen,
If you peered deep into the moustachy bristles sticking out over his upper lip, you would probably see much larger objects that had escaped the wipe of his hand, things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese or a mouldy old cornflake or even the slimy tail of a tinned sardine. Because of all this, Mr. Twit never really went hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you is that Mr. Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. Mrs. Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It's a pity she didn't, because that, at any rate, would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. I doubt whether anyone had ever seen a woman with an uglier face than hers. But the funny thing is that Mrs. Twit wasn't born ugly. She'd had quite a nice face when she was young. The ugliness had grown upon her year by year as she got older. Why would that happen? I'll tell you why. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on the face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you can hardly bear to look at it. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth, but if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. Nothing shone out of Mrs. Twit's face. In her right hand she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people that this was because she had warts growing on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful. But the real reason she carried a stick was so that she could hit things with it. Things like dogs and cats and small children. And then there was the glass eye. Mrs. Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. You can play a lot of tricks with a glass eye because you can take it out and pop it back in again at any time you like. You can bet your life Mrs. Twit knew all the tricks. One morning she took out her glass eye and dropped it into Mr. Twit's mug of beer when he wasn't looking. Mr. Twit sat there drinking the beer slowly. The froth made a white ring on the hairs round his mouth. He wiped the white froth onto his sleeve and wiped his sleeve on his trousers. You're plotting something! Mrs. Twit said, keeping her back turned so he wouldn't see that she had taken out her glass eye. Whenever you go all quiet like that, I know very well you're plotting something. Mrs. Twit was right. Mr. Twit was plotting away like mad. He was trying to think up a really nasty trick he could play on his wife that day. You'd better be careful, Mrs. Twit said, because when I see you starting to plot, I watch you like a wombat. Oh, do shut up, you old hag, Mr. Twit said. He went on drinking his beer, and his evil mind kept working away on the latest horrid trick he was going to play on the old woman.
Suddenly, as Mr. Twit tipped the last drop of beer down his throat, he caught sight of Mrs. Twit's awful glass eye staring up at him from the bottom of the mug. It made him jump. I told you I was watching you! cackled Mrs. Twit. I've got eyes everywhere, so you better be careful! To pay her back for the glass eye in his beer, Mr. Twit decided he would put a frog in Mrs. Twit's bed. He caught a big one down by the pond and carried it back secretly in a box. That night, when Mrs. Twit was in the bathroom getting ready for bed, Mr. Twit slipped the frog between her sheets. Then he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs. Twit came back and climbed into her bed and put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was itching. Dirty old hags like her always have itchy tummies. Then all at once she felt something cold and slimy crawling over her feet. She screamed. "'What's the matter with you?' Mr. Twit said. "'Help!' screamed Mrs. Twit, bouncing about. "'He's having in my bed!' "'I bet it's that giant skilly wiggler I saw on the floor just now,' Mr. Twit said. "'The what?' screamed Mrs. Twit. "'I tried to kill it, but it got away,' Mr. Twit said. "'He's got teeth like screwdrivers.' Help! screamed Mrs. Twit. Save me! It's all over my feet! It'll bite off your toes, said Mr. Twit. Mrs. Twit fainted. Mr. Twit got out of bed and fetched a jug of cold water. He poured the water over Mrs. Twit's head to revive her. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to get near the water. It started jumping about on the pillow. Frogs love water. This one was having a good time. When Mrs. Twit came to, the frog had just jumped onto her face. This is not a nice thing to happen to anyone in bed at night. She screamed again. By golly, it is a giant skilly wiggler, Mr. Twit said. It'll bite off your nose. Mrs. Twit leapt out of bed and flew downstairs and spent the night on the sofa. The frog went to sleep on her pillow. The next day, to pay Mr. Twit back for the frog trick, Mrs. Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. She chose big, long ones and put them in a tin and carried the tin back to the house under her apron. At one o'clock she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti, but only on her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was covered with tomato sauce and sprinkled with cheese. Hey, my spaghetti's moving, cried Mr. Twit, poking around in it with his fork. It's a new kind, Mrs. Twit said, taking a mouthful from her own plate, which of course had no worms. It's called the squiggly spaghetti. It's delicious. Eat it up while it's nice and hot. Mr. Twit started eating twisting the long, tomato-covered strings around his fork and shoveling them into his mouth. Soon there was tomato sauce all over his hairy chin. It's not as good as the ordinary kind, he said, talking with his mouth full. It's too squishy. I find it very tasty, Mrs. Twit said. She was watching him from the other end of the table. It gave her great pleasure to watch him 
eating worms. I find it rather bitter, Mr. Twit said. It's got a distinctly bitter flavour. Buy the other kind next time. Mrs. Twit waited until Mr. Twit had eaten the whole plateful. Then she said, You want to know why your spaghetti was squishy? Mr. Twit. Twit wiped the tomato sauce from his beard with a corner of the tablecloth. Why? he asked. And why had a nasty bit of taste? Why? he said. Because it was worms! cried Mrs. Twit, clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with horrible laughter. To pay Mrs. Twit back for the worms in his spaghetti, Mr. Twit thought up a really clever, nasty trick. One night, when the old woman was asleep, he crept out of bed and took her walking stick downstairs to his work shed. There he stuck a tiny, round piece of wood, no thicker than a penny, onto the bottom of the stick. This made the stick longer, but the difference was so small the next morning Mrs. Twit didn't notice it. The following night, Mr. Twit stuck on another tiny bit of wood. Every night he crept downstairs and added an extra tiny thickness of wood to the end of the walking stick. He did it very neatly so that the extra bits looked like a part of the old stick. Gradually, but oh so gradually, Mrs. Twit's walking stick was getting longer and longer. Now, when something is growing very slowly, it is almost impossible to notice it happening. You yourself, for example, are actually growing taller every day that goes by, but you wouldn't think it, would you? It's happening so slowly you can't even notice it from one week to the next. It was the same with Mrs. Twit's walking stick. It was all so slow and gradual that she didn't notice how long it was getting, even when it was halfway up to her shoulder. That stick's too long for you, Mr. Twit said to her one day. Why, so it is, Mrs. Twit said, looking at the stick. I had a feeling there was something wrong, but I couldn't for the life of me think what it was. There's something wrong, all right, Mr. Twit said, beginning to enjoy himself. What can have happened? Mrs. Twit said, staring at her old walking stick. It must suddenly have grown longer. Don't be a fool, Mr. Twit said. How can a walking stick possibly grow longer? It's made of dead wood, isn't it? Dead wood can't grow. Then what on earth has happened? cried Mrs. Twit. It's not the stick. It's you, said Mr. Twit, grinning horribly. It's you that's getting shorter. I've been noticing it for some time now. That's not true, cried Mrs. Twit. You're shrinking, woman, said Mr. Twit. It's not possible. Oh, yes, it jolly well is, said Mr. Twit. You're shrinking fast. You're shrinking dangerously fast. Why, you must have shrunk at least a foot in the last few days. Never, she cried. Of course you have. Take a look at your stick, you old goat, and see how much you've shrunk in comparison. You've got the shrinks. That's what you've got. You've got the dreaded shrinks. Mrs. Twit began to feel so trembly she had to sit down. <laughs>